Hi, I'm Dr. Connie Casewell Carver. And if you're watching this, you're either a man who suspects that his testosterone is low, or you may have a woman uh, in your life, a woman may be watching this who suspects that her husband's testosterone is too low. So this is a brief, very brief webinar looking at what are the ill effects from having a low testosterone and what can we do about it? So we're talking about hormones. What are hormones and who needs them? Hormones are chemical messengers secreted by, in men's cases, the testicles uh, produce testosterone. It, uh, testosterone travels around the body and affects multiple tissues, the brain, the heart, the bones, among other things. So there are lots of hormones, but we're primarily going to be discussing testosterone with a little bit of touch on estrogen. So one of the most important things to know is that we measure the hormones. Um, and we also know how to interpret the hormones. So in men, we're not going to just check testosterone by itself. We're also going to check a free testosterone. So the testosterone total is partly bound by a protein called the sex hormone binding globulin, and it makes the testosterone ineffective. So we have to know what the free testosterone is also so that we can make a determination if that man is really low or not. The sex hormone binding globulin tends to go up as men age, therefore binding up more and more of that testosterone, making it unavailable. So we do, we do a lot of testing. So it turns out that as men get older, uh, they don't go through menopause like a woman does, but their levels just sort of gradually start to decline. Um, unfortunately, the major laboratory companies have adjusted their, um, their limits to reflect the natural decline that we see with aging. So if you check a 70-year-old man and find out that his testosterone is, say, 350, the lab is going to say that's perfectly okay. When in reality, we know that men do better when their testosterone is at a more youthful level. So men need both testosterone and estrogen. Fortunately, estrogen insufficiency is very rare in men. Uh, in fact, as men get older, their testosterone actually turns into too much estrogen, especially if there's any belly fat. There is an enzyme that lives in belly fat um, called aromatase, and it will aromatize testosterone right into estrogen such that the average 60-year-old man has more estrogen than his wife. So again, men typically are lacking in testosterone, not so much in estrogen. Um, so here's the uh, chemical formula for testosterone. And this is the hormone that gives men their male characteristics. So uh, hair on the chest, hair on the face, um, muscles. Um, these are all part of what testosterone does. What are the symptoms of low testosterone in men? Well, these are a few of them. And not every man has every single one. But if any man who, say, over 40 has any of these, he owes it to himself to get checked out and make sure that low testosterone is not the primary cause. So low libido can be from low testosterone, moodiness, being on edge, depressed, even anxious, uh, brain fog because testosterone is needed for proper functioning of the brain, aches and pains because testosterone is anti-inflammatory. So people can get aches and pains, either joints or non-joints, weight gain, especially fat gain, um, uh, erectile dysfunction, we mentioned loss of being able to build muscle, loss of bones, poor recovery after exercise, a worse immune system. In fact, a recent article came out showing that those men who had the worst outcomes, including death from COVID-19, had lower testosterone levels, also higher blood sugars. We know that in diabetics, um, the vast majority, if not practically all, of type 2 diabetic men have a low testosterone. And when you supply that testosterone, it can dramatically help the blood sugars improve. So are there side effects to supplying testosterone to men who have an age-related decline? 
Well, you see that book on the screen. This is my favorite book to recommend for men who want to find out more about testosterone. Written by Dr. Abraham Morgan Taylor. He is a Harvard trained urologist and he has probably done more studies on the topic of testosterone than anybody else in the world. And he comes, has come out with a resounding positive review or opinion, I should say, that testosterone is beneficial for most men. He even has an entire chapter devoted to prostate cancer because that is a myth. A lot of men think that testosterone is gonna cause prostate cancer and that is not correct. In fact, what he found, it's men with high estrogen, low testosterone who are at most risk for developing prostate cancer. Also heart disease. For a while, there was a scare out there and there's probably some attorneys who've cashed in on this. Um, there was the thinking that giving testosterone actually caused heart disease. We now know this to not be the case. Testosterone increases production of nitric oxide, which helps your arteries to dilate. So testosterone is actually uh, either neutral or beneficial. We also know that there are more testosterone receptors in the heart than any other organ. So it stands to reason that the heart would actually be strengthened by improving the testosterone level. And indeed, there was a VA hospital study, went on for six years, close to 9,000 men were studied. All of them had low testosterone. One quarter of them received testosterone, three quarters did not. And after six years, you can see that the men who got testosterone had a lower overall mortality, uh, heart attack rate was much lower, and stroke risk was lower. So again, some evidence to show that far from being harmful, testosterone therapy is most likely beneficial. So if a man's testosterone is low, we have not found a supplement that's going to improve it. Instead, we have to supply testosterone for that man. So what are the side effects of giving a man testosterone? Well, number one is the testicles are gonna shrink a little. They're no longer being asked to provide levels of testosterone. Uh, so they're gonna shrink. Um, the estrogen level could go up and the hematocrit or the hemoglobin could go up. So we monitor the estrogen level and the hemoglobin or hematocrit. And if either one becomes out of range, we'll tell you what appropriate steps to, that you need to take. So we monitor that for you. How can we administer testosterone? Well, what we don't wanna do is have you swallow it. It could damage the liver. So we don't recommend that method. What is acceptable are three forms a topical gel, a weekly self-administered injection, or it can be done by your spouse, or pellets. We'll talk about each one of those. The way, the, the one method I really don't like are the topical gels. I routinely hear from my male patients that they don't work. There's some evidence that when testosterone is put on topically, it doesn't seem to cross the blood-brain barrier as well as other forms of testosterone. Uh, the absorption can be variable. There can be a characteristic odor. It can transfer to other family members, including spouse, children, even pets. And also it's frustrating for physicians because um, it's, we can't always get accurate assessment of the tissue level just by drawing uh, a venous blood draw from that nice vein that everyone has in their elbow. So it's harder for us to monitor. Uh, weekly injections are acceptable. Um, you're probably gonna go a little bit up and down as that week progresses, but most men can keep it in that nice zone with weekly injections. Uh, it is a thick oil, uh, and so some men report some pain. Um, men who give it to themselves either will put it in their anterior thigh, so their leg, or you can pinch up some belly fat, stick it in your, um, in your abdomen, or if you have an accommodating spouse or significant other, you can get them to put it right back here in your hip. Uh, another method of doing it are pellets. This is my favorite because once the pellets are um, placed, they slowly dissolve over the next three to four months and they can provide a better steady state than almost any other method we know. So it most closely mimics the production by the testicles. And again, this is a quick, less than 10 minutes, painless procedure 
where we take pellets that are pure compressed testosterone, they're sterile, of course, no germs, and they're implanted in this painless procedure. They land in the fat tissue and then they continue to uh, dissolve, keeping a nice, healthy testosterone level. So that's what pellets look like. Of course, we would never hold them in our hand because that would make them unsterile, but that's just showing you the size of the pellets. And again, pellet therapy, we can usually get better levels and they're more sustained than just about any other method. So how long should men continue testosterone replacement therapy? Well, it's up to each man, but in my book, as long as they want to feel better. Uh, I have a great little video I show my women, uh, an interview with Suzanne Summers. She, I believe, is 74, her husband's 84. They're both on hormone replacement therapy, and she makes the bold statement that she and her husband will be on hormone replacement therapy until they die. It just makes for a better marriage, happier individuals, more balance, um, better energy, so many benefits. Um, in fact, testosterone therapy is the number one most effective anti-aging strategy that we know of. And in women, it's um, getting a combination of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So this is just a uh, example, actually, of my husband. Um, before he got started on testosterone, it was actually before I met him, and what he looks like uh, after being on testosterone therapy. His sons even said, Dad, are you working out? And he actually, that's just muscles he has from testosterone. He doesn't work out, but he is stronger. We do recommend that uh, if you're a man and you're getting testosterone, that you get your significant other to come in if you're part of a couple, uh, because there could be a mismatch in libido, for example, if one member gets it and the other doesn't. So bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, that's BHRT, is the most cost-effective therapy to maintain a youthful outlook on life, a most youthful body composition, and a passion, a romantic passion for your life. 